drive. Again, this was the path P drive for the class with today's date on it. It's got a folder in it named 12. That's his folder. I, for lack of better words, have kind of fixed his programs. Now, you may or may not agree with what I'm, what I'm telling you when we get through it, but what I'm telling you is he wrote old pre-PHP 5 code when he did these. I can't for the life of me explain why he did this, but he did. So, kind of different from the way we've done it in the past, I'm going to go over the code first, and then we'll quickly go over and talk a little bit about what's in the chapter, as opposed to doing it the other way. Now, I literally decided to do this at 2.15. So I don't think there's any mistakes in here. All right, if there are, I apologize in advance. I ran them twice, and I don't think there are any mistakes. This creates a really simple blog, okay? What we'll, that's what we're going to be doing in here. Now, if you don't look up here for a second, again, if you are, if you are in, uh, you know, if you've started up XAMPP, if you haven't, start it up. All right, if you have started it up, I want you to do two things. You'll understand, hopefully, you'll understand why I'm telling you to do these two things later. One is, you might want to have PHP My Admin open. So under the MySQL Admin, just click to open up PHP My Admin. That's the first thing. Do you have to do that? You don't have to do anything. All right, but I would suggest you do that. The second thing that you might want to do when you're doing that is, and you may or may not be aware of this, if you all look up on the screen here, you may not know this, but I think you do, that well, the way that this control panel is set up now for XAMPP version 3.2.1, if you click over here where it says Shell, all right, you're not anywhere right now. You're, honestly, for lack of better words, you're sort of in purgatory right now because you're not really in anything yet. But if you want to get into MySQL, you just say MySQL, SQL, minus U root, and hit enter. I'd suggest you do that too. Why? Because some of these scripts, they're going to be creating a table or a database, and then the next script is going to do the same thing. But they're going to show you a different way to do it. So you might want to create something and then remove it right away. Does that make sense? All right. So again, if you come in here, to the control panel and you click on shell up there towards the upper right hand corner it brings up a DOS prompt all right and it'll look like this it'll have your information on it not mine and if you type in mysql minus u root that will start up mysql and it'll start it up from what's typically referred to as terminal mode all right does all that make sense all right, and again, I think you had Denny for the, the class. I have no idea how if he told you to use PHP on my admin or if you used the, from the command line or if you did something else or if you've never even seen this before. You've never seen this before. You took the 147 class with him and you never worked with MySQL? Did you work at it through PHP my admin? Yeah, did you use Workbench? Okay. Sometimes I just want to run up to the wall and hit my head against it real hard for different reasons. Okay, but I'm not going to do that right now because I, we wouldn't finish class there. All right. Now, the yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I always appreciate you saying stuff like that. So, just so you know, there are what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten scripts in this file. And please listen, the first script is not in your book. I made it up. All right, it pretty much looks like the rest, but it's very short, but we'll talk about why I did it in just a couple minutes. So what I'm going to do very quickly is just open up all of these and then get to the beginning. What Omen has you do in virtually every one of these scripts, I'm, I'm going to cheat, I'm going to go ahead a little bit to number one. So this is his script. See where he does this? See that? He's basically right there trying to connect to MySQL, which is fine. All right? Normally, once you get to this point where we're like on maybe no, like the fourth script or something like that, we don't want to keep doing this anymore because this is, this is a horse's ass way of doing things. It is. What we want to do is something like this. 
we want to create our own PHP file, which creates local variables for local host, our login, our password, and the name of the database. Then we want to attempt to connect right there, and we want to attempt to select the database right here. The reason I'm telling you that is by putting in this file like this, all right, like this, that means when we get to a, something like this one right here, we don't need to do any of this stuff in here. We just need to include that database connect file. That's almost always how you do it, if you have a clue as to what the frick you're doing. Yes? We're going to get into that. He doesn't use the I. I means improved. All right? He uses the old stuff that doesn't use the I, and that's why I'm not going over his examples. All right? So taking it from the top, we're creating four variables. All right? Why? Because when you attempt to connect to MySQL, it expects to know what your provider is, which is localhost. It expects to know what the username is, which is root. And ex it expects to know what the password is. We don't have one. So does, do these three lines right here, right there, do those three lines make sense? We could have literally hard-coded in here localhost in single quotes and root in single quotes and the, your single quote, single quote in there. We could have done that. That's not a good way of doing it either. It's not that you can't do certain things, but why? That's the point. So with this line of code right here, this line is attempting, I put the comment up above it, that line is attempting to see can we even connect to MySQL. Not can we bring up a database, not can we do anything. Can we literally, all right, literally, can we connect to MySQL, all right? Then once we've connected to MySQL, this line says can we select the database called my blog? Don't run script zero because yours will fail. It will fail because you don't have a database named my blog. That's what this chapter does. So if I was going to make this actually the zero zero script, I wouldn't have this stuff in there. I would have stopped right there. All right? So don't run this script. You can run it later if you want to, but don't run it right now. What you should be able to do, and this is no, you know, hey, is this an assignment? No. No. Okay? But if you want to, you could see if you could go back to scripts 1 through 10 and replace where he hard codes putting all that stuff in with this file. Does that make sense? All right. And if you really want to see if you can start to understand this stuff, that's what you need to do. All right. We're going to be working on a project on Thursday, and we're going to be working on a project next week. The one we start on next week is really extensive. The one Thursday is like this one but it's better, all right? And again, I'm not saying because there's anything wrong with his. I don't mean there is. He very simply, in, in, a, in a thing of a series of scripts, creates a blog for you. And in that blog, after you create it, you can list out all of your entries, you can edit any entry, you can delete any entry, and you can add new entries. What that is, in essence, is it's a blog that you are treating like as though it's a, what, a CMS, a change management system, isn't it? It's pretty much what we've been doing. Yes. You're never going to see it done the way he did it. Not unless you're working with really, really old code. PHP in their own site says, don't do it like that anymore. Because that was back in PHP 4. Come PHP 5, that's when the improved stuff started. And I didn't want to confuse you, but what we'll talk about next semester in the, in the, uh, in the 164 class. There's another way you can do that is to do it like this. That's the object-oriented way of doing it. So there's, and, and not to confuse you even more, because I'm not going to put it up there, there's actually four ways to do this. The bad way, which is the way he did it, the way I just showed you right here, which is the improved way that's done procedurally, this is the improved way that's done with object-oriented programming, and there's yet another way, and we're going to do some of that next semester, that's called PHP Data Objects, or P PDO. All right, I don't even want to get into that right now, okay? But just to let you know, you'll, no, you'll very rarely, if ever, see it done the way that he's done it. I can't think of, for the life of me, why he did this.
maybe to tick off people like me and it worked okay so moving over to the first script let's look at what this script does and I named these he called it script 12 1 I renamed it because he says it's called script 12 1 but its real name <clears throat> is mysqlconnect.php so I renamed it 01 mysqlconnect.php so you can see the progressive order in these does that make sense all right script number one and script number two are almost the same thing script number one right here says okay what we want to do we want to attempt all right we want to attempt to to connect to what we want to attempt to connect to mysql using localhost with root and with no password now i'm going to ask you a question and don't don't shout something out not that i ever worry about that happening anyway all right but think about it before you answer the question okay the question is five five words long why does this script suck and there's a really obvious reason what are you showing the user in this script what no 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 that's yes you're, you're on the right track what are you showing the user in this script what is this and what is this you're showing them a login and a password why the hell would you ever want to do that I mean that is just foolish and he puts it in here in virtually every script and I think his probably his mindset is well you're just learning that's fine but you know what when I was just learning how to drive the instructor didn't say go on the left in the left lane if you want to you know if you want to because you're just learning he taught me the right way to do it all right and in much the same way I wish he would have done this so really what he should have done is instead of putting in something like this he should have had an includes file and that includes file should have been something along the lines of this the other advantage of doing it this way is you take that includes file and you put it in a place where no one can get at it right here if somebody can get to your source code they can now get in and they know who root is you're, you're never going to keep root as the name of your user you know root and admin are probably the two best known names and it's amazing if you go out there because they've done studies on stuff like this maybe not recently but if, if people have root and they make a make a password what do they make the password no root and if it's admin they make it admin password is right up there too or I'm gonna be tricky P A S S W zero R D because no one would ever think of that all right so what this one is saying is if I can connect to my SQL print right out I've successfully connected and then close my database connection if I can't successfully connect then just print in red could not connect to my SQL so the only way that that should fail is if either I don't have permissions or I screwed up with localhost or if I screwed up with root or if I screwed up with a password does that make sense so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type in localhost and mine's just under 12 not like yours all right so there's zero zero and notice all right well I don't know why that came up but okay so attempt to connect successfully connected to MySQL make sense all right so let's screw it up so we can't successfully connect okay local hot still says it can successfully connect that means it's either cached or that's not a very well written script So let's come back in here. This is the stuff we're going to be building towards later, so I shouldn't back up that well. That's all the stuff you're going to see in just a couple minutes. All right. So let's come back in here. We'll make this localhost. Let's do this. Let's not let's not put a username in there. All right. In fact, let's go in it. We'll go in it from a different browser. So, it says we can connect. That's pretty scary. 
No. Yeah, that's a good question. Nope. That's why. Thank you. I changed the one on the P drive. That isn't good. Thank you. Because none of them should have succeeded. All right. So let's get into here onto the C drive. What's so cool about this is I can show you all this stuff, ideally the right way, but I can show you all this stuff. Let me close all these. And I don't have to worry about ruining my stuff or ruining your stuff. Well, my stuff maybe, but not yours. All right, so there, now it, now it should be correct. So, thank you. So if I come back in here, localhost 12, and now I attempt to connect, all right? I'm able to select. Why? Because I don't have a database right now called my blog. I created it, but I removed it, all right? And remember, the last line that's in here, what it says, is connect to my blog. So that first one's going to fail. All right. Now let's look at the second one. Again, all this is saying is can I connect to MySQL? I successfully connected. Okay, that's what I showed you before. But now when I come in here, and again, local hot. All right, I'm trying to figure out why it's still connecting. Because technically it shouldn't. I did change it, no. Boy, thank you. See, I'm glad you're. I'm. See, you're all debugging. Good job. All right, now, number one, it just successfully connected. Well, did I not change the right one? There it is. Could not connect. See that? That's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get if you either put the wrong host name in there, or you put the wrong username in there or you put the wrong password in there or any combination thereof. Does that make sense? Now, would you agree that, that when you come in here, you probably wouldn't want to show that kind of information. You wouldn't want to show really any of this stuff to a user if something was screwed up. Would you agree with that? All right. I wouldn't. So what you can do in here, and he talks about it, but not in a lot of detail, is any place where you've got something like this, uh, the MySQL, if I don't want an error to show, I can at the beginning of the line, I can put that in there. I can put an at sign. That says suppress any error messages. That doesn't mean the error doesn't exist. That means don't show me the error. To me, that's one of the most dangerous things there is in this language. Because what you're saying is, I know there's errors, but screw it. Just go on anyway. That's not a good idea. All right. So if I go back to that same script, and you just saw this, all right, that's not good. Okay. So there's ways that you can get around just about everything. You don't want to do that. You just want it like this. All right. And now, the reason that, that connected is everything is right here, localhost and root. Well, let's make it rot. All right, we'll put that in there. You say, well, wait a minute, it's saying that it connected. Yeah, it is. It's not showing me the error. It's the same error that we had before, but that thing said to suppress the actual error showing. You don't want to do that until you're ready to release something live. You actually will probably have test groups of people that you want to test your program, and while they're testing it, you want to keep those errors in there. All right. So again, this says in English, Attempt to connect to MySQL using localhost, root, and no password. If you can, print on the screen, successfully connected to MySQL, and then close that connection. If you can't, print out in red, could not connect to MySQL. Does what's going on make sense? What he shows you in the book, just so you see this, is he's got the old MySQL without the I in it. And you have to change around the order of some parameters, and you've got to do some other stuff. He's showing you old school. Now, that stuff is still actually, it's still allowed because there are probably thousands of sites out there where people never upgraded. Just because they never upgraded doesn't mean that you should do it the wrong way. All right. So again, if it's OK, print that it was OK and close it. If it's not OK, let me know that. Make sense? All right.
Let's go on to number two. Again, looks very similar to the last one. I'm trying to remember what the difference was in here. What's that? Oh, now he is suppressing it. Okay. And I guess he didn't have it in the first one. Okay. So, there and there. Again, you will oftentimes suppress everything that's got a MySQL in front of it when you're going into actual production mode. When you're in test mode, you should never do that. I can't say that too many times. All right. So here's number three. Now, what you should do before you run this, and I'd like everybody here to run this, but before you do, I'd like you to go in, look in PHP My Admin, and look over here and make sure you don't have a database over here that's named My Blog. All right. Chances are pretty good you don't. But just in case you do. If you do, there's ways that you can get, get rid of it. The, the drop command has been actually on here for, for uh, PHP My Admin. It's disabled. All right. But no. Yeah, you can do it. You're right. You're right. Thank you, John. You're right. You can go th do it this way. So if I had, if I didn't want my guitar shop, I can click here and I can click drop. All right. The other way that you can do this, if you want to, so just so you know the other way, is that's why I asked you to bring this up. Because now, if I had a database that was named my blog, I could type drop database my blog, and it would remove it. So either way will work. Thank you. You're right. Does that make sense? OK. I know this hurts your head because you've got to go back and remember stuff you learned a year ago. I can understand how that would hurt your head. All right. So what are we telling it to do in this particular, um, in this particular script? We're saying, again, attempt to connect. If you can connect, now this, this command right here, literally that command right there that you see in gray, create database my blog. I could literally come in here and put in that command, and it would create the database. Okay, But what this chapter talks about is being able to run through MySQL operations without having to technically having to know MySQL or you know use the, the actual MySQL command line or even PHP my admin. So what we're doing is we're doing the stuff right in PHP. All right. So what this says here is attempt to run a MySQL I query using the database connection that we had from up here and attempt to do this. All right. And I want to show you something. If everybody everyone if you're in this class, would please look up here because I want to show you. The way it looks in his book is like this. Because when you use the old MySQL, not MySQL I, you put the connection last as opposed to first, and there's no I in it. And it may say, well, who cares? The way that I'm showing you is considered the better way of doing it. It is the improved version. One of the biggest differences is that when you close the database connection, when you use MySQL I, you've got to give it your database connection name. When you do it just MySQL underscore closed, it's just paren paren. So the stuff that he showed you in the book is considered to be a poorer way because it's an older way of doing things. All right. So again, you'll notice now if I come through here, I'm going to remove that line. Okay, I've got my script. Now if I come in and run the script, and that's script 3, successfully connected to MySQL, the database has been created, the database has been selected. Was that 3 or 4 I was trying to show you? That's 3. All right. So we created the database. Now if I look in here and I type in show databases, Lo and behold, what's in there? My blog. And if I go back into PHP My Admin, no, not there. If I go back into PHP My Admin here, and you go, well, there's no My Blog there until you refresh the screen. And there's My Blog. So we just created a database using just code. Does that make sense? Questions? All right. 
then let's look at the next one. Number four. Okay, now we want to attempt to create a table. So notice what we're not doing in here. There's, there's, in that part of the, there's a create table, but there's no create database. We've already created it, right? So again, we're coming in here and we're attempting to connect. If we can connect, we're attempting to choose the MySQL database. MySQLI select database. Using the connection, select my blog. And if you can select it, all right, if you can't select it, come back and tell us that and close the connection. If you can select it, all right, we're going to go on in just a minute. So all we're attempting to do right here is to connect to MySQL. That's it. Then if we can connect, then we're down to here. So now, remember these kinds of commands? And Amanda, you should have run something even similar to that, even if you were using, you know, the workbench or whatever. Again, we could take this code that you see right here, and we could drop that right into the command line. We'd have to make sure our database was active, and then boom, we put that in, and it would work. But now we're doing it in code. So in code, we're saying, hey, we want to create a, career, a query that creates a table that's called entries. That table will have four fields in it. Entry ID, which will be our primary key, all right, and it'll be an int, unsigned, auto increment. Title, which will be a var char of size 100, Entry, which is a text field, which means we can have up to 256 characters in it, and date entered, which will end up being the current date. Does all that make sense? If the query succeeds, just say table has been created. Otherwise, tell us it was not created. And notice I didn't put any at signs there before the error, so show us what the error is. Now, if we accidentally did this, Let's say that we spelled entries like this, okay? Would we get an error message? I'm asking you. Why? Right. It just thinks that the table is called entries, E-N-T-R-Y-S. It has no way of knowing that technically that's not the right way to spell it, okay? So if I come through here now and run this particular script, which is number four, now it says the table has been created. Well, how do I figure that out? Well, again, I can do it different ways, but one way is to come back here, use my blog, which makes it active, show tables. There's entries. Describe tables, or, uh, entries. And it shows us what's in there. Now, what's this going to give me? I'm asking you, what's that going to give me that when I hit enter? Everything that's in entries. What's in entries right now? Nothing. We didn't put any records in yet. We created the table, but we have yet to put in records. Does that make sense? So that's the first four entries that are in there. Now the next one, now we want to be able to come in there and actually add stuff. This is really simple. This is our form. Entry title and entry text. That's it. So again, you don't have to do this yet, but if you would look up here for a second. Now I'm going to run this. It says entry title my first blog isn't this great all right post it could not end it because you got an error in your syntax okay we'll have to figure out what that is in just a second all right but i want to come in here and it did not go through so there is still something hosed in my syntax my guess is probably have a problem with a parenthesis or something we'll figure it out in just a second all right, but you notice what we have here. We've, this is the whole form. A label, entry title, a label, a text area. So I'm sorry, a label, text box, label, text area, and a button. That's the whole form. All right, let's go back and look and see if we can figure out what was the problem with that. It's in the query, so it's in right here. OK, 
Okay, I can already tell. See that? Entry ID. Insert, wait, insert into entries. Okay. Entry ID, title, entry, date entry. Values, zero, title, entry, and now. So there's something it doesn't like. See we can, it, it, this worked before. Go ahead. The apostrophe where? In here, these? Ah, that could be. Let's go back and try that. All right, Zach just had an idea here, and it's probably he might be correct. Let's go in here and say uh, my first blog, and instead of saying isn't, let's say isn't that or this great. See if it takes that. Okay, he's right. Thank you. And now if we go back in and we look, there it is. Now, we're going to know, learn it in the next script, and thank you, why, how we can fix that. All right? You're going to see it right away how you can fix it. It's not hard. Yes. Well, that's what we're going to do next. All right? But does it make sense? What we have now is this is a very simple blog where right now all we can do is add entries. All right? So we're able to insert. We're not yet able to update. We're not yet able to delete. We're going to add those in the remaining scripts. Now, what you would probably end up doing, what you would probably end up doing is you take all this stuff, give it a wrapper that had a home page in it, and then put these scripts in there. Does that make sense? All right? And probably the scripts that you'd put in there would be the insert, the update, and the delete. Okay? All right. So we've got this. So in other words, right now, we've done the first five. OK? All right, so five down, five to go. So the, here's the next one. And this answers Mike's question. MySQL real escape string, and we're doing strip tags. What we're trying to do is we're trying to pro prohibit somebody if they put a bunch of quotes in there, single or double. And we're going to try that to see if this fixes it. And what if they put garbage in there? In other words, what if they try to be mean and put, in a, uh, put a JavaScript tag in there to see if they can you do some SQL injection? We're going to try to do that. All right, so I'm going to run script number six. I should have said zero 06, and it doesn't. It does now, but yours, I think, does. All right, so I'm going to come back and run script six. All right, my second blog. Isn't this or isn't that great? And then we'll come in here and we'll script alert hello script. So what did I do? I attempted to put in an apostrophe, a double quote, and some really bad JavaScript. Okay? So it's been added. Let's go back and look at it in here. There's the apostrophe. There's the alert, hello. And it literally got rid of those tags. All right, it stripped them. Why? Because it's called strip tags, right? And if you say, well, why can't I look at that inside of here? And the answer, the answer would be, you can't. All right, so there's entries. And there it is. Now, I will tell you, it's not considered to be a good idea to constantly be going in there and changing stuff inside of PHP and by admin or changing things in here when you've got your PHP program running. Does that make sense? See what I'm saying? Because you literally now have three ways you can change this. You should pick one and stick with that one. And if you're, if you're doing it with PHP, that should be the only one you're using. Yes. <clears throat> The question was, what if you didn't have the script ta the strip tags? What can happen? I'm not going to pull them off, but what can happen is if you ever try doing that and you get an alert that pops up on your screen and it says hello, what that means is you're able to write JavaScript and, and put it in that database. All right, And if you really know what you're doing, there's different kinds of injection. That's one kind of injection. 
And another kind of, you know, what, what you can do is anything you can do with JavaScript. All right? Like what? Well, if I really knew what I was doing, I might be able to go in there and find the password file and print it out. Do things like that. All right? But the other thing that, that you can end up doing with, with stuff like this <clears throat> is not only running JavaScript commands, but you can, if you know what you're doing, you can write MySQL commands. So I can say something like this. I can say something like, Select star from entries. Nothing wrong with that, right? That's a pretty simple query. All right. But if I know what I'm doing, I can say this. Then I can say, or delete, or maybe even here I could put an and in here, and delete star, which means now remove everything. Now, what if I wanted to do this? I don't have this in here, but let's suppose instead of an entries table, let's suppose instead of an entries table, this was a listing of passwords. Does that make sense? All right. So we're, we're going to say select star from users. All right. But I want to say select star from users, and I can only do it where it's me. So where user equals J. Scott. Okay. All right. So that's cool. That works. But if you, if, if you, if you're, site is open to SQL injection, I can say select star from users, all right, where user equal J Scott or or one equal one. Why one equal one? Because doesn't one always equal to one? All right. And this isn't crafted very well, but if I know what I'm doing, I can now get everything that's in there. So I can get every login. Now, if they're smart, at a minimum, what they've done is they've taken those passwords and hashed them to make it hard for me to get to. But if I want to log in as somebody in a site, I need two things, don't I? I need their login and I need their password. Now I've got everybody's login. All right. So now I go through there and I start checking for people who did use words like password. And if I find somebody, now I'm golden. Now I can go in there and I'm going in there as them. And if I really know what I'm doing, you say, well, geez, they can figure out who you are by your IP address and stuff. That's not true. If you know what you're doing, you can hop it all over the world. And by the time they figure out it's you, that machine won't even be around anymore. Plus, you're not going to do it from your house. All right? You're going to do it from some place where it's going to be hard for people to, to be able to figure out who you are. It's like if you ever watch the old Law & Order shows when they'll, they, did, did, you get, did you get the phone number? Yeah, but it's from a burn phone. Why do people use burn phones? So they can throw them away, right? And he, people do the same kinds of things here. And it's amazing. There have been documented stories. People spend years trying to do this stuff and break into a system because they consider the reward worth the risk. And even if it takes them years, they can get in there once and either wreak havoc or go in there and you know, maybe get a million dollars or whatever. It's worth it. I'm not telling you to do that. In fact, I'm telling you not to do that. But what I'm saying is there have been documented cases of people doing this kind of stuff. All right. So what we're attempting to do in this sixth script here is to at least make it as hard as possible. There's other things that, that you can use. There's real escape string. There's strip tags. There's HTML special chars for H, you know, special HTML characters. Sometimes what you find is notice what we're doing here. We're telling you to run trim, but first do a strip tag on everything in the title. Then trim it. Then take that and run escape string on that. So we're trying to give it really, when you think about it, three levels of defense. Trim and strip tags and MySQL real escape string. Sometimes you'll see even a couple more in there. Maybe they take that whole thing and surround it by HTML special chars or something like that. You can't be too careful. And again, I've said this before, they've done studies where people say, you know what, I'm willing to have it take me 10 seconds instead of two seconds if you can guarantee me that nobody's ever going get, to get, get a hold of my information. I don't know about you, but if you're not doing what I'm about to tell you, you're silly. And that is, anytime you're going out to the web, and if you're going out to Amazon or any place else, and you're doing anything that's going to involve PayPal, or it's going to involve your password or whatever, that, that up in your address bar, that sure as hell better change from HTTP to HTTPS, at a minimum. If it doesn't, you shouldn't be buying from them. 
because that stuff that means it, it, because a lot of times when people do that and they're not using HTTPS and you fill out a form when you hit enter and you look all that information is being sent here in your query string and if you can do that that means that somebody else can go look at that information too and they can find out your password your MasterCard number your visa number etc once they find that out they're essentially you all right okay so that's the first six any questions on that one It's what I just said. Basically, what the escape the string is, is going to do is that, that part is going to make sure that if we put any quotes in, that what it's going to do is go, it's going to change them from a quote to a slash quote. All right? So when it puts it into the database, it'll be put in correctly. Then once it gets put into the database, you'll have to basically unescape it. All right? We're going to go through some of that stuff as we go on. Okay. So that's now we're able to add things. Well, again, as I mentioned to you, okay, now we can add. Well, we can add. What about viewing? Okay, so let's take a look at that one. Now, again, on here, I've gone through all these already. All right, so if I go through and do some stuff, if you haven't already run eight and nine, all right, you might have some problems. So there's what's in there right now. And actually, I, I, I don't know if I can edit. Yes, I can, because I've already run the, the next two scripts. So that's what you're going to see in a second. But right now, now we've got the ability to at least see all of our scripts. All right, This is where everything that you've done this semester, it doesn't change. But what I'm going to tell you right now in the next five minutes is the most important part of this entire class. All right, How do you think, how do you think that we're telling what this stuff is? It's not the title. It's not the text. What is it in there that, that, that makes everything that's in there unique? which is just ID. It's the ID. All right, why am I telling you that? Because take a look at the script. Because what we're going to want to show, what maybe it was entry ID, but what we're going to want to show in here is that ID. Now, that ID is considered fine to show. Now, notice if I come here, see how that changed? ID equal to? You have to know that. This is what makes online stores work, is stuff like this. All right? So if I grab the first one and I go to delete, notice, well, that's weird that the entry still is two. My second blog. Right. And you know what? You know why it's two? Because I had other things in the database earlier. OK? And let's, let's look at this one. All right? Well, that's not even right. That's number one. So why is that one one and that why is that one two? Don't have a clue. I reversed them. I put my okay. No, but but look, what I'm telling you is look at the ID on that one. All right, and I think that when we put them in, I, you're right. I think we put them and show them in descending order. All right, someplace. Select star. There it is. By date entered, which makes sense, doesn't it? In a blog, you'd have the most recent first all right which is what's so cool about this I think is the whole thing put together all 10 scripts somewhere in the in the vicinity of 300 lines and you'd have to put a nice little cover around it but you could literally take this and almost publish it the way it is all right there's no administrative feature in it but if you wanted to put something out there as an example of something that you did where you created a real simple blog on your own I was looking for mine before because I did this with the students a few years ago, and I literally I found a really cool, cool little um, image of a pig, and I called it high on the blog. All right, and we created we we all created our own. All right, since we're a little further behind this semester, I decided to show it to you like this. So again, taken from the top, what are we doing? All right, we're attempting to connect to the database, then we're attempting to connect to the table. Then we're saying from that table, all right, do all that stuff. Any statement that you put in here, any of these MySQL statements, just so you know, any statement like that, okay? If you want to, you can put in there either or exit like this, and it'll just exit with no message. Or you can say exit and say something like unable 
to open table, something like that. Or if you don't like exit, you can also choose die. And that's the one most people choose because if you can't select your database, you're dead in the water. That's where the die kind of came from. Does that make sense? Now, we didn't do that. I left that off of here because he did. So if it fails, you're not going to get any message whatsoever. That's kind of tough sometimes when people run your program, all right, and they don't get anything, any feedback. They just get a blank screen. Okay. So now when we come in here, now notice what we're doing. We're attempting to run this query right here. Okay, and, and it's R. What does R mean? I have no idea. I think for row, you could have called it anything you wanted to. But this is saying attempt to run the query, that query here using that connection that's up there someplace, and save the results in R. R literally holds everything. R is referred to as a resource variable. Maybe that's why they called it R. I don't know. Then what we're saying in here is, show me the results. But show me the results and print them out a record at a time. Does that make sense? Because that's the way we want to show them so it makes some sense. All right. And what we're saying in here is after you print them out, underneath it, put a couple hyperlinks. One of them, that if I click it, it's going to bring up the edit entry, and it's going to pass to that edit entry the current ID. The other one called delete entry, and if you call that one, pass the current ID. Does all that make sense? And you're right. I don't know. You know, sometimes when I get going, no, no, no excuses. But if I come back in here and I add another entry, well, we'll do the add entry secure. All right. Another entry. Another enter. Whatever. Whatever. And we put this in. Now if we come back again and we run this, that's got our latest one. That makes sense. This should be three, this should be two, and this should be one. Now remember, since these are ID fields, and I'm going to show you this even though I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, I'm going to remove this second one right here. So I'm going to delete it. It says, are you sure? Yes, I am. So I delete it. Okay. Now if I come back here, it says it's still there. Well, I have to refresh, and it's gone. And notice that one is still three, and that one is still one. We've now lost ID two. We can't recover that one. Does that make sense? Since it's an auto increment, that's what we'd want to have happen. Now, if somebody really knew what they were doing, you could go back in there and manually put it in. That's considered really poor programming. Again, it's one of those things, just because you can do it, doesn't mean you should. All right. So looking at the last two. So that's the viewing the entries. All right. I don't even want to save that, because I don't remember what I all did. Now we want to delete. All right. Well, notice what we're doing again. Here's our query is going to be, okay, first we're saying here, okay, well, we want to delete the blog, the blog entry. Okay, so is the ID set, and is it numeric? So in other words, do we have something to delete? All right, because if it comes up and it brings up a delete screen, okay, and there's nothing set, there's no ID set, there's nothing to delete. We're deleting by ID. So if we have that, select the title, all right, and the entries, why? Why are we doing this line? Why when we run this and we run script number eight? All right. First of all, why do we get that? You're, you're on the right track, but you're wrong. And the idea is you should never be able to get to the delete screen directly. Why? What's not on there? There's no ID. So it tells us we referenced the page in error. But if we go back again and we run script 7, and now we click delete, now we're getting there the right way. See the difference? Look up in the, in the, uh, in the address bar. Now it says ID equal 3. Does that make sense? Now, if we don't want to do this, the easiest way is to just click our back button, and it's still there. We could put something in there. There's no code in there. So right now, if we click delete, it's gone. If they don't want to, we should probably tell them if you if you change your mind, just click the back, or we could have put a button in there to cancel this. Yes. No. 
Well, that's, that's a fair question. So if we came in here, and I think this is what you're asking, so we've got this. All right, if we really knew what we were doing and we said question mark ID equal three, the answer is yes. That's another security hole when you think about it. You shouldn't be able to directly do that. All right. That's a good question. All right. And then finally, now lo notice what's in here. What do you think that means? Yeah, it means report on the result. No, in English, what do you think that line means? Yeah, it, if, we, if we did remove one row, which is all we're allowing it to remove at a time, then affected rows should be equal to one. If it is, we tell them it's been deleted. Otherwise, something was hosed. And again, notice the query. Delete from entries where entry ID equals. All right. And we should not be able to, in, to, to delete more than one record because we've got the limit one in here. Remember that back from a year ago? All right. And then the last one that's in here is very similar. But instead of deleting, now we want to let them make changes to it. So we want to let them make an update. Most of this stuff that you see up to about, and I could be wrong, but it's somewhere up to about, about there. It's almost the same script as the last one. All right. But then when we come in here and we go in and we write this, well, what do we have to check? Think about it. So we come in here to run this script, this last one. Again, access to error. Good. So can we do it this way? Again, question mark ID equal to. So again, we can get into it that way. There is two is the one we, we removed. So it's actually not in there. All right, so if I say three, boom, we're in there. But again, that's not the way you should allow a user to get into it. The user should have to get into it by going to view entries and then going to edit. I'll take your question in a second. So now, notice another looks kind of hosed. So I'm going to put another flaming entry. some actual words. All right, update. Says it's been updated. So we go back into here. All right. And no, it's not up to date, so we have to refresh it. Another flame and entry, some actual words. So what I just showed you, it took an hour, but what I just showed you was a complete change management system written entirely in PHP. His works except for the fact that what he does in all of his scripts is, like, for example, this one right here. It should have been called and edit entry.php, but he calls it when he saves it, like, script 12 underscore 09. So it doesn't work because it's got the wrong name. So I went in and manually changed all those. Does that make sense? Question? No, wh what you could do is, well, okay, the fair question. All right, let's go back in there and let's run it. All right, so we'll come back in here and we'll say, question mark, ID equals two. All right. Now, according to this, we have something in there. Oh, that's view. All right. So that's zero 09 edit entries PHP ID equal to. It says object not found unless I screwed something up. Zero 09 edit entries dot PHP. Let's see. If I put a three in here, does it? Oh, that's view again. Okay, zero 09, edit, entry, dot PHP, question mark, ID equal two. All right. This is a test.
a test. It says it could not enter. Now, that could be that there's just something wrong with what's in here, but notice what's there. There's the title, there's the entry, all right? And it says where ID, so the query looks like it's okay. Now, the only thing I would say is when we look right here, when it says the entry could not be It, it did not give us a reason. So it came down to here and it says, could not update the entry because, but it didn't tell us why. All right, so there is a MySQL error in there, but there was nothing in it. So I'm not sure what the error was. Okay. But you're right, and you would want to go in there and that's the kind of thing you'd want to check. You don't want to give people, because think about it. If, if, let's say that your site allows you to do that, the stuff that Mike just talked about. So let's say that you can edit, okay? Now you're like, now, now you, you, this is a full-fledged site, and it's an e-commerce site, and it's got products in it, okay? Well, what I want to do is I want to buy, you know, I, I'm having the first-year people, they're doing a, a website on hats, and I want to buy a hat, okay? But the hat is 20 bucks. So I want to edit that file, and I want to edit that record, and I want to change it from 20 bucks to 20 cents. If you don't watch what you're doing, you're able to do things like that. And I may have told you about this story. I, I found this interesting. This was a few years ago. I was watching a webinar. And the guy giving the webinar, he was, it was in San Francisco. And he says, I want to tell you all an interesting story that happened to me yesterday. He said, I was at the hotel last night. And I went to get on the internet. And it said that there was a charge of $9.99 for internet, which I thought was a little unreasonable. But you know, I thought, what the heck? But then I noticed when I, when I was going to agree to it that after I, I agreed to it, everything went up and it was a get because it was all in the, in the query string up on top. I said, so I went back in there and ran it again and I changed the query string from $9.99 to nine cents. And it took it. And he said, and then what I did was I went downstairs and I was talking to the people in charge downstairs and I said, can I get a copy of my bill? They were all worried because they thought I was upset. And he said, no, I'm just trying to reconcile my records. And he said, the guy ran it off, even looked at it, really looked at it, and gave it to him. And what do you think the internet charge was? Nine cents. I mean, think about it. If, you know, and, and you might say, well, that's not that big a thing. All right. Well, if you can do that, what's to stop you if, if somebody's going to grab movies in their room and do the same thing? You know, because it's probably done the same way in that hotel. So you could sit there and watch movies all night and charge yourself a penny per movie. Now, that's not legal, but my guess is people have tried doing things like that, and if it's been possible, people have probably done things like that. Again, I'm not encouraging, I'm discouraging you from doing that. All right? But I think people try doing stuff like that all the time. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, sorry, it's a little late. When we come back from the break, we're going, actually going to just take about... 15 minutes to a half an hour and run through what he's got in the chapter.